Hello everyone, this is the Crimson Cure, welcoming you to the Crimson Tower, a place where we keep a feminine foot on the neck of the gynocracy, feminism, and black male misandry. So go ahead, pull up a chair, stay a while, and listen. Can you hear me now? Press a one if you can hear me. A two if you can't. Okay. Okay. So before I get into the topic, I want to have a giveaway. Um, the first few people 
are going to be my masculine mercenaries family. Then I'm going to choose my top five contributors. And the next five people after that will be random. So what I how I want to do it, I was going to run like a sweepstakes and a raffle, but I don't really know how to run a raffle. And I don't really think it's that big of a deal. But I do want the five, the next five people to be like, random though so I was thinking starting tomorrow what I do at the end of the stream is I'll do something that that actually is random I'll have you guys to press something unique in the chat and the first five people that do it will probably be the five that I gift something to Does that sound fair to you guys? So basically, my masculine mercenaries found my top five contributors. And then the, the next five will be random. I might even do the random thing a couple of times, like maybe three times, then take those names put them in like a bag and on camera you can watch me pick the names so that way everyone will be able to know that it was a random pick and that I didn't like exclude people sort of almost like a grab bag Does that sound okay? And the gifts that I'm wanting to send out, I want to send them out over the weekend. Does that sound like a fair way to do things? Okay. Okay. All right, so we are going to talk today about a woman's SMV or her sexual market value and how to handle that, whether to lead with it or not, what men think about your sexual market value when you lead with it versus when you don't. And so we're going to like talk about all of those things. So I know that I've only got, I've got just shy of 20 people in here. Um, press a five if you think that a woman should lead with her sexual market value. Hey, LaShawn. Put a five in the chat if you think a woman should lead with her sexual market value. And just be honest, because there really aren't any right or wrong answers. I just want to get a gauge. We don't, we don't know. We don't know if we should lead with it or not. <laughs> Cass put a 10. <laughs> right. 
Ruminant says no. Here's the thing. Sometimes, especially in this space, we actually will hear some differing views. Some men, when you hear them speak in this space, they'll say, if she doesn't put out first thing, we're not going to have any dates or get to know each other or any of that. And some guys will say, no, I'm not real interested in all of that. that I, that'll come with it. Um, I'm looking for her to lead with other stuff if she can. Here's the thing, though. In my opinion, there are no right or wrong answers to this. And it, trust me, the whole show won't be about whether or not you should leave with it. I'm actually going to talk about how you should handle it. Um, you hear a lot of different opinions. Like I was on the panel uh, with the Roger report. I think it was last night or whatever. And it was a gentleman up there that was like, nope, she got to put out the first time that I talked to her, the first time I meet her. And there are dudes that really think like that. Um, and hey, you know, he's in the right climate to get that sort of reaction to him. But... My thing is this. You can lead with your sexual market value and some men will be okay with that. And some men you'll turn off. The surprising thing about it is you'll be turning off guys if you don't lead with it as well. So if you don't lead with their sexual market value... Excuse me. So if you don't lead with your sexual market value, there are those men who will walk away from you because you don't. They'll walk away because that's what they want out of you and you're not giving it immediately. Now, I don't know how immediate is immediately, but I've kind of tested the water both ways. Lead with my sexual market value. And there are times when you can get a positive response. Other times negative. And then I've tried it the other way around. Well, I don't mention anything about sex. And I actually start trying to demonstrate my value as a woman. And that is also rejected. Now, regardless of whether a guy accepts you or doesn't accept you because you led with their sexual market value or you declined to lead with it. I don't know. Every time I get on here, it's like, it's like I want to um, yawn or whatever. So I apologize for that. But whether you lead with it or not, you're going to be turning down some men or some men are going to turn you down. And then there are other men that, are, that will accept this from you. So in regards to whether or not you can attract more men with or without it, 
there's no right or wrong answer in this particular climate because we have to remember that this is not a climate, this is not a society that values a woman's sexual market value. And I lay that at the feet of the women just because we're the gatekeepers for sex. Men can't have sex with us unless we say, I mean, aside from any type of assault. So when women started lowering the value of it by selling it and by, and by making it marketable in the first place or making it a bartering tool in the first place, women are the ones that lowered the value of it to begin with. So women who don't lead with their sexual market value are oftentimes at a disadvantage when they're looking for relationships because the dudes are like, where's the sex? Where's the sex at? Here's something that I also found a little bit of that I want to clear up because I think it's guys that have an issue with it. Sometimes I hear talk where the guys are like, well, she slept with another dude quick and she's not sleeping with me quick. But I don't understand that because she should be sleeping with me faster than she sleeps with other guys or whatever. However, they're gauging that. Thank you, Ruminant. So leading with SMV in, is a long-term auto disqualification for me. Do that, and she is put in the quick hit friends with Benny's column. Yeah, and see, for, for a lot of men, that's it. And for other men, it's like if she doesn't do that, it's problematic. If she doesn't do that, it's, it's problematic to them. Um, so if you're a guy in the chat, thank you, King me. If you're a guy in the chat, have that, has that ever crossed your mind? Why a woman you think might've, you know, led with sex with another guy isn't sleeping with you as quickly. Put a one in the chat. If you've ever, that's ever crossed your mind and you don't quite know why that's so. Cause I'm gonna tell you why we do that. Hold on one moment.
Hey, y'all. That was unexpected. I apologize. I had to do a whole bunch of running up and down like four flights of stairs. Because I'm on the third floor, but it's tall like a fourth floor. I know that was a long pause. Thank you to Triv for the cash out. Okay, so I don't even remember what I was saying, but I think I can pick it back up. Um, leading with your SMV, that's what I was talking about. Some men, I said, rumor that said she saw me as a husband, long-term boyfriend material as opposed to the last guy. I let a woman course correct if her graveyard ain't running over full. Uh, yeah. Excuse all of that. I don't know why they want to do all of that when I'm live. It's so annoying. But anyway, Ruminant hit the nail on the head. The reason why a woman will supposedly sleep quickly with one guy and slowly with you, which I don't know how y'all figure that anyway. Well, she must have slept with another guy real quick. And it's like, in my opinion, first of all, that ain't none of your business. Because it ain't none of my business what chick you slept with real quick. But anyway. Many times when we meet you and we decide we're not going to leave with our SMV. But we also attempt to show you our other qualities. In the hopes that you find value in those other qualities. That's because we see you as better than. Uh, two trips that he told you. That's because we see you better. Than the, uh, maybe another guy we dealt with. We see you as better than the other guys. We see you as long term. We know as women, despite what men say, oh, I'm not going to view you as a thought. If you have sex with me the first time you say hello, we know that's a lie. We know 90% of the time that's a whole lie. We know that. Okay. Maybe the younger ones don't know it. Maybe the stupid ones don't know it. But most of us, we know. We know that. You know what else we know is a lie? Y'all want to know what else we know is a lie? Have sex with me first and then we'll talk about a relationship. No, we won't. No, we won't. You don't have no intention of being in a relationship with me. Because men don't attempt to contemplate that. They know what they want a woman to be when they meet her. Now, whether or not she turns out to be that thing that he wants or thought that he wanted out of her is a different story. But he knows what he wants her to be when he starts talking to her. Okay. He knows when he deals with a woman, I want her to, she's a trick, she a thought. Or this is a woman I want as a girlfriend. Or this is a woman I want as a wife. So I'm going to vet her as such. I'm going to vet her like I want her to be my wife. So then he'll start requiring other things out of you as a woman. Sex is not the first thing on that list because he's pretty much going to get that anyway.
we as women come standard issue with a vagina. So that's not all that special. The other qualities that we have are more important. So is my chat stuck? I think my chat might be stuck. It's not going well today. It's really not. It's not going as well as I want it to. So we know that if she has sex with me first, then we'll talk about going on dates and stuff. That is a lie. How you start is how you finish. If... In this society, men aren't that different from women in terms of if I can get a lot for a little, I'm going to get a lot for a little. So if he can get sex, obedience, submission, this, that, and the third, whatever he's looking for, and he don't got to spend a dime, he don't got to really talk to you, he ain't got to really do nothing, then that's what he going to do. And you giving it up and all of that kind of stuff does not guarantee anything at all. Not giving it up doesn't guarantee anything. In point of fact, there aren't any guarantees. That's the thing that both parties have to understand. You're not guaranteed anything at all. There aren't any guarantees. You can show up a full lioness to a man that say he want a lioness and that won't guarantee that you'll be with that man or that it'll work out between y'all. It just won't. See, I'm going to tell you how I assess this kind of stuff. When I meet a dude and I, re I want him to like, let's say I want him to be my husband. typically the first thing that I lead with will not be my sex because if all goes the way I want it to go, you'll have that on deck daily anyway. That's, that's, that go kind of go without saying. I'm going to be trying to demonstrate what kind of woman I am, what kind of relationship you're getting into when you deal with me. What are you actually about to deal with? The sex is not the first thing on the list. I mean, it's on the list, but it's just not number one. Right? Because I'm trying to prove that I have value and that he can benefit from me from something other than what happens in the bedroom. He needs to know that he can benefit from me outside of intimacy. So that's number one. When I start vetting, if you start acting like you're entitled to have sex with me because we said hello to each other a few times. I'm walking off. Because if I start asking you to pay bills because we talked to each other a couple of times, you look at me crazy. So I'm not entitled to your wallet and you're not entitled to Kitty. In point of facts, in point of fact, a lot of times I won't even accept the date from a dude. I won't accept that.
Because I know, even though I don't view it like that, I know dudes view it as a a coochie coupon. And <laughs> we're not we're not paying that. Uh, we're not paying off that debt. I don't even want nothing from you. We gonna purely get to know each other. That's what we gonna do. Because if your intent is what you say it is, you shouldn't have no problem with that. And if I'm not asking you for nothing, you really shouldn't have no problem with it. So at that point, he's either going to walk off or he's going to engage. Because if I don't ask for anything from him and don't really accept nothing from him, he doesn't have any basis to be like, well, you owe me. No, I don't owe you how. I don't owe you nothing. We've been talking and texting and meeting up and stuff like that. This has been, this has been mutual. I haven't been sucking you dry. And to be, and, and if you really want to know, I've ran off. At minimum about 10 dudes with that. Because they claim they wanted a woman that had all this kind of value and these kind of qualities and this type of thing and this type of brain and this type of mindset. Okay. We'll see if you really want that. And when I decided... To not lead with my sexual market value, we're going to lead with the other stuff. We're going to lead with the stuff you just said you wanted. You listed five things you wanted out of a woman. I actually happen to possess those five things. I'm going to show them to you. And ask you if you have the currency to pay for those. And ten times out of ten so far, dude was like, mm. it just fell off. Because I wasn't talking about what we going to do in the bedroom. I, I wasn't talking about that. So that's how, that's pretty much how I do it. You. The, that's kind of the reason why we won't lead with SMV a lot of times. Is we see value in you. We're, we're trying to prove our value to you aside from the sex. We, we know about the sex. The sex is not... Because here's how I view it. I'm not, I'm not 16. Neither are you. You ain't used to sex yet. And a woman that has proper value isn't looking to to land and snag a dude with her sex anyway because that doesn't actually work. Again, going back to the stuff that we know are lies. If we have sex first, then we can talk about a relationship later. No, you won't. No, you won't. Any man that tell me I we will think about a relationship, I'm done. I'm out of there. Because I know he playing with me. He just playing around long enough to see how long it's going to take for me to let him in the guts. And we're not going to play that game. The only time lionesses play that game is when we want to play that game. If we don't see nothing else out of you but your sex, we probably will just give you some sex because we know that's all you are. Did y'all know that? Even a lioness will do that. Even a lioness will do that. If she knows all you bring to the table is a hard Johnson. If she's attracted enough, she'll get that to you, but you don't mean anything. 
And she know you ain't going nowhere. That's why she don't call back. We don't really get deluded into thinking things are going to turn into relationships. Men who want relationships say that outright. And then they act as if they want relationships. And men who just want to hit it do that as well. So the way to really handle your sexual market value as a lioness is to handle it with class and some grace. Don't throw it around. I don't care what these guys say. To And, I, and that's real talk. Oh, you, well, you gave it up to somebody? Yeah, because I'm not a virgin. Your point? Well, why you won't give it to me? For the same reason you're not screwing every chick. It's some chicks you don't screw. What makes you pick one woman over another? So whatever that criteria is, I have a criteria also. And if you really want to know, physical attraction is not the only criteria. It's not even number one. Most lionesses have a list. And whether or not she's physically attracted to you is usually not number one on that list. It's on the list. It's like in the top five reasons, but it's not number one. She's likely trying to get with you and trying to get you to be her husband or long-term relationship because of other qualities she's seen in you. We already attracted. That's why we talking. That's why we answer your text messages. That's why we answer your phone calls. We're already attracted. That's happening. But we've also seen other things beyond your physical attractiveness. We've seen we we've seen what kind of man you are as far as we can see it. As far as the observations that we have made as to how you move, what you do, what kind of masculinity you have. We, we have observed you in different little situations and stuff. And we've decided we're more attracted to that anyway. You having a penis. We assume y'all come standard issue with that. Just like we come standard issue with a kitty. So... There really isn't a one-size-fits-all for it. Just as a lioness, handle your sexual market value with some class. You can't, you can't give your vessel out to everybody to dump whatever they've got into your vessel. But if you've got proper personal market value on down to the sexual market value, this is something that you already know. This is something that you already understand. Your vessel got to be protected. This is why lionesses like the truth. So that we can properly determine who to let into the vessel and who not. 
Because we have reasons why we sleep with you. So the hyena, she, she motivated too, but sometimes she just motivated by being hot. Sometimes she motivated by other stuff that she can get out of you. But a lioness actually has a reason why or why not. They really don't have nothing to do with how you look. Because I've met men that I was initially very physically attracted to. But we never got anywhere. Because once I got in his proximity to actually see what kind of man he was, it was like, no, not you. Not you. You, I'm not putting you in my... You, I'm not putting you in my morgue. You can't, you can't be a body. You can't be, you can't be, see, this, lionesses think like that. Lionesses sound off. What's good, complex? We think like that. We know that if you're not going anywhere as a relationship, you're not about to run up no mileage. Bye. That's like knowing we have to know who's going somewhere and who's not. Just like if you're on a if you're on a car lot, the salesman has to pay attention to the people he think is going to buy. And he has to actually understand who's coming in there just to look they have no intention of buying these cars and who's coming in there with the money. A lioness thinks like that when we think about who, who we're about to sleep with. Are you about to buy this car or are you just trying to test drive it? Or you just want to sit in the driver's seat and look at the steering wheel and, you know, look at the dashboard. We ain't got time for that. We don't have no time for that. Get out the lot. You ain't even coming here with no money. Hey, Tiffany. Yeah, ain't no aimless running up the miles just because it's just because it's a car. No. I ain't even never seen you drive before. You might be reckless and anything. Where your license at? See, we ain't even got no time for all that. We don't have no time for that. Chief Rocker, thank you. I almost missed that. Thank you so much, sweetie. We ain't got no time for all of the, the aimless mileage. Not doing aimless mileage. This mileage got to mean something. With a lioness, the mileage has to mean something. And if you step into me with that real vague, we might could make a relationship, but I want to hit the skins right now. No, there are, there are so many hyenas available. How dare you? See, that's my stance. It's so many hoes. Why are you over here with it? There are literally, you can, you can close your eyes and throw a rock and hit a hoe, right? And you can get that out of her real quick. She don't have no standards. She not trying to figure nothing out. The only thing she trying to figure out is do you look good? And maybe if you got a couple of dollars, she can squeeze up out of you. That's all she thinking about. You can literally talk to her right now and 20 minutes later be in her guts. Like literally. Please stop coming over to lionesses thinking we supposed to do the same thing. Because especially if we demonstrate that we're not on that tip. And we actually have other areas of value as a woman. And I'm trying to actually demonstrate that to you. Don't insult me. It's just too many hoes to, to insult me that way. I've always had these kinds of mindsets. I mean, of course, as you get older, you learn more lessons, go professor. So it's not like I've never changed ideas or 
uh, learned a new lesson that made me see things a little differently. I mean, that's always the case because I always look to grow in my thought processes. Yeah. So it's like, it, it's, it's so many chicks. Like this society has breeded. We literally call it thought culture. We literally call it acculturated whores. Like we literally say that. And we say that because there's truth there. There are so many women that don't care about the mileage. She, a 42 year old woman, a hyena my age have had so many bodies. She don't remember all the names of the dudes that she been with. If she knew the names in the first place. I heard somewhere that the average 30 year old has had like 30 to 35 year old has had like 20 or 30 men in her lifetime. I thought it was personally higher than that. I will never reach that number in my lifetime. I will never reach that number. 20, 30 men, I will never reach that number. It's not even close. It's not even in the ballpark at all. Like, not even half that number either. If you just really want to know, I'm not going not gonna to get there. But there are women who are there and beyond. There are women with triple digit body counts out here. She don't care. She been doing this since she was 16. She don't care. At 42 in this society, you probably dealing with a chick with high double digits, maybe triple if she real bad and it was community property. So a lioness, the, the reason why she's a lioness partially is because she has not done all of these transactions with me and she has not had all of these exchanges with them physically, emotionally, energy exchange, mental exchange. She hasn't had those kinds of exchanges. Because the lioness knows that doing that actually breaks her vessel. Even if she didn't start with a broken vessel, that will break it. Or it'll at least put some serious cracks in it. It actually wears her down mentally and emotionally. That's a wear down. for It's a wear down for any woman. The hyena's worn down too. It's just that she's so broken it almost don't matter. But we feel that. We feel that. We feel that craziness. Too many dudes trying to approach you. To, too many dudes want to come. And it's like, uh, no. That's why we be cutting off. Like, nope, nope, nope. A lot of times you will meet a lioness that hasn't had sex in a very long time. Like, if she's single, she'll, she'll go celibate. Like, eh, because I can't do it. Can't do it. My husband passed away in 2018 in January. I haven't been riding that carousel. <laughs> You're not going to get me caught up every couple months. A new nigga, we not dealing with that. Every couple months or every couple weeks. Or, I know. No. No. Mm 
we not doing this. And it's just ain't finna go nowhere. You just here one day, gone the next. Might not see you again. You don't hit the guts. And you went on. No, 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 no. Not doing this. You know, every time you turn around, it's a new nigga showing up. You know, she done she done got in the car with that one. Ooh, that's a new one. Yeah, we ain't never seen that car before. She sure is busy. I'll be celibate in a minute. <laughs> I'm like, nah. Eh, you know, I think I'll just chill. I think I'll just sit on her. I'm not running up the miles like that. I'll buy every battery operated boyfriend on the market before I be right racking racking up the miles like that. I'm not doing that. Thank you, go professor. To support your interest. Thank you. Yeah, you know, you study every time the neighbors look out, you jumping, hopping in and out. That's another new car. Hmm. Hey, girl. Yeah, one of them, like on Friday. Hey, girl. You know, they be friendly with you. Do you know they've been talking about you the whole time? They've been talking about you. Nobody got time for that. <laughs> like I said, I buy everything on the market, everything sold at Amazon that take a battery. I buy that before I be racking up these senseless miles. Nonsense miles. These little dead end miles. These cul-de-sac miles. We ain't doing that. Racking up these no outlet miles. <laughs> Just miles for no reason. <laughs> I look back. Ooh, he was in your graveyard, girl. Don't even talk about it, girl. No, we gonna talk about him. Why is he in here, girl? I don't, told y'all I want to talk about that. I don't want to talk about the the circumstances surrounding that. <laughs> I'm like, girl, you did him, girl. Mm -mm. You know, you got you got folks in that graveyard you don't even want to talk about. You ain't want nobody to know he in there. Mm -mm. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. The other lionesses that have proper personal market value, proper belonging market value, friendship market value, sexual market value, and marital market value, we not doing that. We not just we don't have a senseless carousel <laughs> it's just senseless miles <laughs> you ain't just jump in a car and just drive for no reason no we not doing it as every man come through and say hello you you want some you want some you know just passing it out like yeah the soup kitchen <laughs> and if that's the price of admission to to talk to a man then I guess I won't be talking to him. And I'm not saying a man can't have that as his price. If that's what he want to have as his price, he demand that you bust it open within the few hours after he talks to you or else he ain't going to talk to you no more. He have a complete right to have that type of stance. It's just that I won't be meeting it. That's all. That's all. And it's okay.
That's okay. He can have whatever standing he wants. Remember that, ladies. You don't have to acquiesce to that if that's not who you are. Always be true to who you are. Always be true to who you are. A lioness's sexual market value is handled with class. If you run up on a guy and he's like, well, you can't, I'm not going to talk to you and we're not going to do anything unless you bust it open tonight and that's not what you want to do, it doesn't matter what kind of vibe you think you have with that guy. He can, he can be left alone. No harm, no foul. You didn't get nothing out of him and he didn't get nothing up out of you. That's fair. Because don't nobody owe nobody nothing unless some agreements have been made anyway. I've met guys that had that type of standard. Well, if you don't do this, then we won't talk. Okay. That's fine. It's okay. Well, you ain't going to do... No, sir. Well, why you... It, the, the, listen, we don't have to ask, ask or answer any questions. You grown enough to have your standards and you can have them. And I'm grown enough to say no. I ain't trying to get you to change your stance. Um, as a matter of fact, I'm glad that you let me know that that was your stance. Now I can move on. And I'm pretty sure the next 10 chicks you talk to will be willing. And I'm not even saying that as to be funny. We'll, well, if you do that, then we'll talk about having a relationship. No, we won't because you don't answer text messages and calls right now. And we just in the just get to know you phase and you already not answering text messages and calls on simple stuff like how, how you doing today? Really? And I just must got boo-boo the food stamped on my forehead. I think that this is going to pick up and change after I give you some. And I'm not giving you none anyway, because then you're going to turn into a stalker. So, no. Because if I do that, then now you're going to want to try to answer the phone. No. But anyway, ladies, handle your SMV properly. You want a man to be your long term or your husband, you must demonstrate your value to him outside of the bedroom. You must be able to demonstrate your value. If he has set standard to let you know that this is what he's looking for in a woman and you can actually meet that standard, then you need to be working on demonstrating how you can meet that standard. If sex happens quickly, it happens quickly. If it happens more slowly, then let that be organic. But at the same time, you should be demonstrating your value and let the relationship be based off of that. Any dude talking about he want a relationship and then he get vague when you be like, well, are we going to have a relationship? Well, you know, I see because, you know, I don't know. Well, I don't know either. I don't know no more than what you know. 
You the one supposed to have a construct and the standards. You the one with the mission and the program, right? Right. So why are you asking me? Well, what you want to do is not about what I want to do. It's about what you want me to do. Why do you want me? Or any woman? What do you want me to do? And if it's reasonable, then it can be reasonable. If it's something that is outside of your capabilities, then this is why you have these conversations so that no one will be wasting their time and energy on something that's not going to go anywhere. So if, if a man gives me his mission and I can't complete none of the tasks on that mission, then I bid him a fine farewell. No use in him wasting time with a woman that can't do this stuff. I'm not going to be in his way, you know what I'm saying, blocking his blessings to get a, a woman that's going to come in there and do what he want her to do. I've run into that. I run into guys. I had a real good vibe with him, but he wanted a high-powered chick like he wanted like a 92. I'm not built like that, and I know I'm not built like that. He wants a 92. He wanted to be high-powered. He wanted to have... You know what I'm saying? All of these little, you know, this paperwork and, and these degrees. And I don't have that kind of stuff. And at 40, I'm not going to go get it. And then we liked each other on a basic level, sure enough. And it was nice. But it didn't go nowhere. Because I'm not the woman he want. And I'm not going to just have sex with him just to, you know, get just to see how it would have been. No, I'm not doing that either. What's good, new? So I think that's all that I got for y'all today. So what I need y'all to do is like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Today's episode has been brought to you by our sponsor, A-Game. So look into the description box. Click the link for A-Game at agameherbal.com. Use the Kendra 10 code to get you a 10% discount on your next purchase. This has been yet another Crimson Cure production. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace out.